Oh my God, Candace Owens, Candace Owens, I can't even. It's time for me to address why Candace Owens is just flat out wrong and people shouldn't be listening to her. A couple of weeks ago, someone sent me a video of Candace Owens. This is someone that I know and care for and someone who I believe cares about me. This person who sent me this video is not black or African-American, but part of a community of people that are being misled by the overzealous and illogical arguments that Candace Owens seems to be preaching from a well-funded platform. There is a smidge, just the smallest smidge of credibility to Candace's position that different black people are having different experiences in America, but her thesis is so underdeveloped that we can't even get off the ground. And to state that systemic racism doesn't exist in America is just a plain lie. So for the benefit of people who are really trying to understand systemic racism in America, I just put some thoughts to paper and I wanted to put together this brief video that explains how systemic racism impacts all black people in America. I've come up with the perfect analogy that should put an end to Candace's position. Racism is actually like a cancer that affects all black people. And like cancer, there are different types of cancer that affect different people to different varying degrees. And I really love this cancer metaphor because in public health, we say our genetics are like a loaded gun and it's the environment that pulls the trigger. Some of us have been lucky enough to catch this systemic racism, this kind of social cancer in stage one. And we have been able to leverage other privileges and social and economic advantages that we have that allow us to suppress and mitigate the damaging effect of this social cancer in our lives. There are some cancers that you can actually be screened for these days. You can do genetic tests to see if you're predisposed. And if you are, you can take steps to prevent the onset of that cancer in your life. You can change your diet, you can change your lifestyle, you can move, you can do preventative therapy. Uh, in the same way, some of us are in such a privileged position that we can kind of screen uh, for our children and implement preventative measures uh, to try to suppress their vulnerability. We can move them to the best neighborhoods and put them in the best schools. We can afford to insulate our kids to protect them from the many challenges that are typically associated with systemic racism. On the other hand, some of us have a virulent and deadly stage four racism diagnosis. The racism has metastasized. With cancer, doctors say that the cancer has metastasized when it spreads to a different part of the body than where it started. When we see racism affect many aspects of a person's life, uh, we could say that their racism has metastasized when we see that it impacts their access to education, their access to healthcare, even their access to healthy foods at a grocery store, then we know that that racism has metastasized in their life. Moreover, some of us have other social diagnoses that exacerbate the negative impacts of racism and make it really difficult to tease out which social illness is actually causing the symptoms that we see manifesting in our lives. Comorbidities are illnesses that are happening at the same time in a person's body. In this case, the social comorbidities could be racism and poverty, disability, or sexual orientation together. With cancer, you can seek treatment and make lifestyle changes that can improve your chances of survival and remission, but really there is just a bit of good fortune that comes into play with surviving cancer. In the same way, with racism, there are choices and efforts made by individuals to offset the vulnerabilities that are created because you are black in American society. But just as with cancer, ultimately there's just a bit of good fortune that comes into play when, when you are uh, able to put systemic racism into remission in your life. Unfortunately, what I've seen are people trying to deny the threat or even the existence of systemic racism, this social cancer, by pointing to a couple of survivors. But think of how wrong and inhumane it would be to use a cancer survivor to justify the false claim that cancer is not deadly or that it's not serious enough to warrant awareness or research attention. And unfortunately, this is what Candace Owens seems to be doing all day long. I guess sometimes the survivors of racism try to deny the existence of racism to manage their own fears. 
it is difficult to live life with perpetual vulnerability as a black person in America. The thing about surviving cancer is that there's always the lingering possibility that you could come out of remission. At any moment without warning, your cancer could return. And this holds true in my metaphor. No matter how many degrees I get, no matter how much money I make, no matter how much good I do, at any moment without warning, I could be subject to racism and bias. As a survivor of racism, I always have vulnerability. And Candace, you do too. But I am woman enough to acknowledge the paradox of this reality without having to deny humanity or compassion to other people. Please share this video with anyone who mentions the name Candace Owens so they can understand how systemic racism affects all Black people in American society. Thanks.